Hello, everybody. How you all doing? Good, good. I'm a little under the weather. Yeah, I feel a cold coming on. It's too bad because I usually like to come out and give everybody in the front row a big, wet, sloppy welcome kiss. None of you look disappointed? This is not good for my self-esteem. What is good for my self-esteem is uh, comedy. Comedy to me is therapy. When I'm on stage, I have tons of confidence. I can do anything. I can say anything. I can expose anything. <laughs> but have one person tell me I have a stain on my shirt, it will send me to bed for a week. <laughs> That's not good. I really should probably look into that. Um, just recently, I, I posted a video of myself on YouTube, and my childhood friend's older sister shared it on Facebook. <sighs> so, um, this childhood friend's older sister uh, naturally is f uh, friends with mutual friends with my older brothers. So, uh, another person, one of her friends, uh, commented on my video, said, "Oh yeah, yeah." I remember the Jensen family, yeah. Uh, the older brother, Peter, uh, he was a good softball player. The other brother, um, Kevin, he, he, he was a good football player. And I remember Brian, uh, I remember him as a six-year-old. <laughs> um, in a ballerina outfit. <laughs> For 45 years, I thought that story was dead. And now it's back. First, I was mad, you know. I, but then I thought, no, wait. It wasn't a ballerina outfit. I was a French mademoiselle. <laughs> I had a tilted beret with attached blonde wig, pleated skirt, plastic cigarette holder, and flats. I was a chic -a six year old boy in Levittown. <laughs> I just was getting that image. Um, Apparently, my mother didn't do a good enough job talking me out of these things. I don't know why. Half the stuff came from her closet, <laughs> including the cigarette, plastic cigarette holder. She was chic, too. <sighs> Just the other day, I went to the supermarket. It was like 2 in the afternoon. There were 8, 9, 10 single men all walking around with shopping carts. I was in heaven. Helps to know I'm gay for this story. <laughs> anyway, I'm looking around, checking them out, up and down the aisles, and no one is paying attention to me. Ten single men shopping alone on a Thursday afternoon and not one of them gay? This can't be. It was like reverse Stepford Wives. <laughs> so I start looking in their carts. Not one of them had imported hard to pronounce pasta. An issue of men's health or Ladies Home Journal, or any kind of scented candle. Things weren't looking good. <laughs> so finally, on the last dial, I spot one. He's got a big smile on his face, and he's looking right at me. I look in his car, and sure enough, there it is, a package of Oriacete and Strosia Prete Pasta. Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> An organic rotisserie chicken, two Diet Cokes, and a music compilation CD of the ladies of the 80s. And I thought, great, you know, this is it. He's the one. So he's coming over to me. Now, in my mind, we're already at his house. He's just finished cooking me dinner. We're sitting on the couch having a nice glass of Chardonnay. Glasses clink. Katy Perry is playing. <laughs> And he's leaning in for the kiss. Now remember, all this is happening in my narcissistic mind. So back to reality, he comes over, he leans in and he whispers, Are you on the job? What? Are you security? Uh, no, why? Oh, I asked because I, I see you looking around. I thought you were working undercover. Uh-huh. Not the kind of undercover I had in mind. <laughs> Apparently his idea of undercover security and my idea of cruising the aisles of the local grocery store are very similar. I was disappointed. 
Uh, I had our whole life planned out. He had no idea. Well, either way, one of us would have ended up in handcuffs. <laughs> All right, that is my time. Thank you for indulging me. Enjoy your night.